that 250 kg oh man such a beautiful freaking video i reckon i've seen that video i don't know man in excess of 100 times i'm sure 250 kg front squat clock of with a pause that's a beautiful thing man now that i've you know, spend a bit of time front squatting in my time. I, like, you know, I can almost picture, I can feel what he's feeling in a way. Um, his stance is so narrow, man. He's, he's a big guy. He's not a, he's not a, 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 a short fella. He's a big guy and he's able to hit that ATG position. So upright. No thoracic rounding. No leaning over. His legs are so freaking strong. And there's so much more kilowatts left in that engine, man. There's so much more power left in him. Just absolutely murders that 250 like, like nobody's business. That's got to be my favorite video, man. That, that, that has to be my favorite video. The song also, you know, makes it freaking kick ass. <sighs> when you see a guy that size, narrow squatting, that much weight that's a beautiful thing i get it you know he's he's, he's got the lip weightlifting shoes and whatever and that changes a lot of the stuff look for me you know it changes changes a lot um when i see that video it makes me want to put my olympic weightlifting shoes back on and and, and mess around with them just for the olympic ju just for the, uh, the 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 front squat just so i can be like him basically man just a freaking amazing thing you know back in the day when i stopped wearing the the heels uh it was purely because the hip pain got me you know one of the first few times that i kind of kind of i got the pain i was like okay so what's up with this let me try changing the shoes change the shoes to flats felt better and right then and there i decided okay that's enough of that i'm, I'm, I'm gonna squat with um with other heels but now I see this clock off for the billion time, and I'm like, man, I want to put the shoes back on and see how it feels to be so upright. Um, I'm not like dogmatic in my way of thinking, oh, it has to be flat shoes, flat shoes. I would love to be able to do what he does in flat shoes. That, that to me would be like heaven. Um, but I understand for, for me to do that, it would take extreme mobility, something that I would love to get. Um, certainly now that I'm doing these wide stand squats, I feel like I'm tapping into some sort of mobility and I, and I, uh, you know, I, I certainly don't want to let go of that. I, I, you know, I would love to be able to do that bare feet. That would be sick. Um, but it's just an advanced level of, of, of strength. Mobility mixed into a perfect concoction that would, you know, that's, that's the pinnacle. Um, but seeing that video, there's no breakdown of anything, man so confident so today you know after watching this video in, in the morning uh went to the gym and i was like i'm gonna, I'm gonna try some front squats try some front squats with a pause see how it feels um originally i wanted to come in and do the deadlift that today was supposed to be my deadlift day push the 200 kilos for for 10 maybe get 12 this time around i'm tired man uh, I'll, I'll be frank i'm tired it's sluggish um Went to the deadlift, got up to 220, that went, that moved so slow. What's the point? Yeah, whatever the low bar, no, not the low bar, the, the wide stand squats are doing to me, that 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 tap, tapping into some of the recovery points from the from the deadlift, just feel it in the lower back. Just feel it in my lower back. You know, now when I see myself squatting from behind with the wide stands, I can see a little bit of butt wink. I can see that struggle to keep a neutral, you know, lower back. So for whatever reason, that wide st wide stand squatting is incorporating almost like a different. It's like obviously it's a different angle, but it's like a different challenge for me to stabilize my lower back. You know, when I'm in a narrow stand, narrow stands, I feel like it's easy to stabilize the lower back. But now in a wide stands, I'm really taxing the lower back. And when I finally get to the deadlift, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm taxed. You know, I don't have the right power. So right now, I'm thinking to myself, man. So I have to skip today deadlift. Um, tomorrow I want to come in and hit some like front squats with the normal stance, you know, do the re re uh, reverse pyramid, go for maybe 171, 162 and work on the way down. That's the plan for tomorrow. 
But these wide stand squats, man, at such low freaking weight, they are really taxing my system. You know, today, I don't know what day it is, three or four since the first time I uh, hit the wide stands pretty hard. I'm still sore in the adductors, still sore. So I had that in the back of my mind as well when I was going into the deadlift session. I thought, well, you're, you're sore in the, in the, in the adductors. It's probably not a good idea to, to hit the volume. So I kind of sold myself on this idea to come in and hit a top set. You know, 260, 240, something like that, and call it from there. Um, I couldn't even get to 240. You know, I, I stopped at 220, so that was the end of that. But it wasn't too hard to squat. So I managed 160 pause. Um, and the whole time I'm thinking about clock, or the whole time I'm thinking about a pause. I don't know what it is about a pause. You know, when you see somebody squat all the way down, right? You know, so sit in the hole and then get out of that position. It just, it's like the ultimate test of, of like strength. I don't know. I don't know why, I, you know, I like some of these things that I like. You know, everyone likes different things, man. Like some people love a low, low bar, max weight, parallel squat. You know, move it. However you want to move it, just freaking move it. For me, I like this stuff. You know, the, the, the pause. It's like the ultimate expression of I own you. You know, you own the weight such a cool thing to me I, I, I don't know what it is about it but um i noticed when i squat eight atg with the pause the first motion that i produce into the bar it's not like just straight up the first thing i do is i lean over you know so i automatically tap into the glutes and then i kind of go from there i would love to see like with clockov you see that he, he just goes straight up like his first movement is up it's not hips back, you know, um, you know, I, I can sit here until the cows come home trying to analyze what's weak, what isn't, it's probably quads, it's probably quads, if you are being, you know, shifted over, so you are tapping into your glutes and your, you know, and your hamstrings or whatever, you're, you're probably trying to make it a somewhat a, a deadlift, you know, it's not a deadlift, but you're trying to tap into the muscles which make you deadlift well, because if you were, let's say, in a freakish freaking world, right? Like, let's vacuum it up and, and just fantasize for a bit. In a world, if, you, if your deadlift was zero, I know that's, that's stupid. But let's say your deadlift was zero. You can't deadlift at all. But you can squat, you know, front squat 100 kilos. What do you think your body will want to do? Do you think your body will want to bend over? Hell no, man, because that's the deadlift. You just crumble. So your body will, will just try to find the path of least resistance. In somebody like that, in some freakish freaking being that has a 100 kilo squat and zero deadlift, that body must remain vertical. Must remain vertical. So that's how I think about it. The more you bend over, the more you kind of go on the continuum to the deadlift world. The more you stay upright, the more you're kind of going into a squatting world. So we all kind of fall in, in some point of that continuum and, and it's it's entirely up to you and how you train and how your morphology lines up and many other freaking factors. But that's how I look at it. You know, some people will never be able to be an elevator up and down, straight up, like Lou. You know, that guy is just freaking all quads, it seems. Although that is the most simplistic way of looking at it. There's a lot more going on than just freaking quads, man. Let me tell you that. But this is how I try to compartmentalize these these two relationships between pulling and pushing. I know that's simple, I understand, I'm saying it again, it's not that simple, there's a lot more other stuff going on, but what are you better at? Are you better at pulling or pushing? Most people are going to be better at pulling, simply because this is where the muscles which are strongest in our body are found, so that's me, 265 deadlift, 210, 212, whatever, squat, so I'm better at pulling, what does that mean? What is the number one pushing muscle in the body? When we're talking about lower body, what is the number one pushing muscle? It's the quads. The quads extend the knee. Extending the knee is pushing. That's that's what we say pushing. Obviously, there's more lo lo more going on there. There's the adductors involved, blah blah blah. The hamstrings, you know, they're like stabilizing the the quad, and it's a you know it's it's a muscle that crosses two joints, all this sort of stuff. But at the, at the heart of it, the quads are lacking if you are shifting away from it you know if you're if quads are your number one primary mover you're gonna want to stay upright you're gonna because that's where quads are working right um 
I have been back and forth with this idea probably a billion times in my head. I remember Jug Juggernaut you know, channel, uh, Juggernaut Strength, I think it's called. Um, Chad Wesley Smith did a video there, which really captured my imagination. Started the year, I kind of, you know, concluded, hypothesized that this was the correct way to think about it. The way he kind of said it, and I've said this on the, on the channel before, is, is it's like this. He simplified it to these two statements. If you get stuck halfway up, you have a weak back. Think about that. If you are squatting the bar and you come up out of the hole all right, and you stop halfway up and you just drop down, you've basically reached a point where you are maximizing your quads and you can't grind at all. Like grinding is not possible for you at all. So you can't lean over and tap into some of that posterior chain. So he basically said, if you can't grind squats, your back is weak. Grinding equals back. That's how I thought about it, right? And if you can grind the living hell out of the weights and they're slow from the get-go and you're just grinding all the way up, you've got a strong back, weak, weak legs. So you, you, you never, you never quick. It's been a little while since I've last heard him speak about that, but that's the general vibe that I got from that video. And, and that kind of guided me this year to go, okay, I can't grind weights. I pop out of the hole real quick and then I stop halfway and now I'm like, shit, I got a dump, a dump. So then I spend a lot of time doing RDLs, 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 you know, 200 for five by five, blah, 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 all that stuff. And I found myself more confident under the bar. So I pop out of the hole, out of the ATG position. I get to that kind of parallel kind of world. And I'm like, this is cool. No worries. I can grind this out. Bang, strong back, right? Soon after that, I hit a 265 kilo deadlift, strong back, continuing that same conversation. Strong back. You grind that out, you got a strong back. If you can't grind, weak back. Grind, strong back. Um, that's one way to look at it. That's simply one way of looking at it. So if you are sitting there to your, thinking to yourself, are you a grand grind master or are you a bailer? If you're, if you're always bailing, you got a weak back, man. Just work on RDLs, block bulls, all that kind of stuff. Volume deadlifts and whatever, whatever. Um, What's happening with me? <laughs> this is where some of these theories start to fall apart. Well, in my case, I've gotten better at grinding. I, I can grind weights out. Um, that 200, uh, the two, 12 and a half kilo, I, I, you know, I pop down, pop back up, and I, you know, my, my, my upper back starts to round. If you watch that video again, I've seen that video a hundred times myself, my own 212. You see that there's a thoracic uh, collapse, and I kind of catch it and I grind it out. It's not the craziest grind that you've ever seen in your life, but it's, it's a bit of a deformation of my back, okay? So, you know, one would serve to think that, okay, it's your back that needs more training so you can kind of prevent that from happening. But in the same token, when I squat, front squat, get into the hole, the first thing I want to do is lean over. So I've got a strong back, weak legs. So now my legs are a problem. If I'm, if I'm referring to the front squat. Um, it's freaking confusing, man. It's freaking confusing to kind of sit down and, and think to yourself, what do I need to work on? What is my hypothesis right now? And the hypothesis is always shifting as well. Like, you know, because we are always evolving. You're always targeting one thing and then the other thing, blah, 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 blah. When I see myself front squat today, I see motion going backwards. My hips shoot back. I create some sort of a, a, a closer to a vertical shin and I go up. So I load my back and then I basically hip extend on the way up and then I maybe catch less quad, you know, quad involvement, more hip extension. That's what I see when I front squat. That's what I see. That's what my body wants to go to. That is the path of least resistance. Ass back, vertical shins, deadlift that sucker up. Uh-huh. There you go. Now in, in this whole thing, it's not a complete vacuum. It's not a complete, you know, isolation. It's just pure hip extension. No, my quads are working to the capacity that they're able to, but that, you know, I... I I, I reach a ceiling fairly quickly with them. So if you think to yourself, what if I put on stupid, I develop these stupid quads, stupid, stupid quads. Would my body want to do that? Would my body want to run away from a strength? Where, where, you know, if you think to yourself, where do quads you, uh, are mostly used? Vertical shins or forward shins? Forward shins, man, because that, that involves the quad. If you have ver uh, completely vertical shin bone, you're completely loading the posterior chain. 
So if you just see yourself moving and you're like, okay, what what are my shins going? Is my are my shins basically always forward? That means I'm always in my quads. You know what I mean? This is how I start to think about these things. And I often find clashes within my thoughts. What the hell is going on, man? You know, in the front squat, I'm there like vertical shin and the hell out of it. So it's all hip extension. And I see my 212 squat. I'm there catching myself, running my freaking spine over, you know, in the middle of the uh, of the lift. So what's happening there? I'm freaking weak. Nothing, nothing is strong with me, man. Everything, everything shit. I don't know, man. Sometimes you sit there and you're like, want to bang your head against the wall to kind of work out what's what. Because ideally, with that diagnosis, you plan treatment. That This is medicine 101, man. You do the exam. You do your exam. You take some blood. You do some diagnostics, some radiology, some imaging. You, you compile all this stuff together. You work out what's, what's, what's the weakness of this patient. Or oh, the hemoglobin is really low. We must transfuse this patient. This is what's causing the shortness of breath and the chest pain. First you've assessed, then you make a diagnosis, you treat, and then you reassess maybe in a day's time to see whether the hemoglobin is increased in the blood. Uh-huh. Okay, your hemoglobin is not normal. It's above 100. Okay, great. How do you feel? Oh, less chest pain, less shortness of breath. Done. But if you make the wrong diagnosis, if you say, I reckon, uh, you know, it's the vitamin C. You're low in vitamin C, whatever whatever that means, man. And then you, uh, you give him a whole bunch of orange juice, <laughs> whatever that means, right? I'm just talking out of my ass. And then, you know, a couple a day later, you, you, you reassess, vitamin C has come back nicely. Are you short of breath? Yes, I am. I, do you have, yeah, yep, I've got chest pain and shortness of breath. Shit, I screwed up. I'm sorry. Must be something else. That's what training is as well. That's how I look at training. You assess and you need frequent assessments as well because your body's always changing. It's a fluid thing. It's not a machine, right? That's what I like with my training. Okay, what, what, what's in the last, you know, what period? I don't know how long. Since I've been doing the black pool, the, the block pools, the, the deficit pools, the now the conventional for reps. Okay, that's a lot of back work. Maybe my back is all right now. Maybe my quads are, you know, lacking. And maybe because of the quads are lacking, my body's moving away from dorsiflexion. We don't want to go to dorsiflexion. Our quads are weak, man. Let's shift that sucker back and let's use the back. Maybe there's a compensation mechanism with that. The body's locking down my dorsiflexion because I got weak quads. This is where you take your head and you run through a brick wall and you go, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you really got to love this shit to put up with these thoughts. Otherwise, if you didn't like this shit, man, if you don't like thinking about this, you'll be a very, very frustrated person. But hey, I love thinking about this and I like amusing myself with my diagnoses and <laughs> with my hypotheses. Anyway, appreciate all of you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.